Hello folks, just thought I'd do a quick live stream here and talk a little bit about the new Chord Mojo 2, which was just announced, uh, on, I guess, two days ago, like on the 31st. It looks pretty cool so far, um, but I want to talk about the pros and cons of it. Feel free to chime in if you're joining in the live stream. And also this will turn into a video in my channel uh, later as well. Um, let me just see here. Let's go over some of the specs. First of all, um, it's really an evolution over the original Mojo, not a revolution, but uh, you know, it certainly has, first of all, can you, hold on, um, I'm on my AirPods. I think the volume is really low. If someone watching can let me know, first of all, before we get started, if you can hear me, because I'm using my AirPods and I wanna make sure that you can actually hear me before I continue, um, leave a chat. Let me know if you can hear me. That would be great. <laughs> can you hear me? How do I sound? Okay, cool. Thanks, Paul. Um, I just never know with the AirPods whether they're syncing up properly. Uh, okay, so let's talk about the new Chord Mojo 2. Um, it was just announced a couple of days ago. Uh, it sounds pretty cool. It's, a, it's an evolution, not a revolution. Um, over the original Mojo. The things that are exciting about it for me are that it has this new uh, DSP feature where you can actually kind of like, not really EQ, but sort of pseudo EQ with profiles, the sound. So let's say you have um, headphones that need some more bass, you can actually increase the bass in a really, really good way. And the way uh, Rob Watson Chord tends to do things, they tend to actually do it in a very, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, lossless way, um, even though all EQ is technically lossy. But, uh, you know, Cordy Electronics has a very good reputation with um, not only, you know, things like that with, you know, their DSP stuff with regards to filters, um, you know, different sound signature filters and stuff like that, um, that are built into the other, the other products like the Cord Hugo and the, you know, uh, Hugo TT2, um, but also, just the engineering behind it, um, if you read some of the Rob Watts um, technical specs um, from the head Fi, you can kind of read more about that. Um, so anyway, that's exciting. Um, it's not good. It's not going to be, in other words, it's not your average standard bass boost that you see in most other things. Um, but you can also boost other frequencies as well, like if you want more mids or more highs, depending on uh, a deficiency in your headphones, you can actually boost that up as well. The other thing that's exciting is the battery life is supposed to be a lot better. The power management and charging is supposed to be a lot better. You know, hopefully it won't get like hot when you're charging it and using it at the same time, although that remains to be seen. Um, but also the battery life is a lot better as well. Um, so that's a big plus. Um, just looking through some of the specs here. Uh, I will also, when, once this turns into a video on my channel, I will um, post a link to the specs on Chord's site as well. One of the reasons uh, I may actually not get the Bojo 2, however, is due to the fact that I'm actually pretty happy, and I posted a video about this before, I'll post a link on the top left, pretty happy with you know just playing wirelessly on the go with my AirPods Max or even the AirPods Pro that I have here in my ears um, for a very light travel situations that works well for me. And I'm perfectly happy with that audio quality. You know, it's not audio file sound quality, but it's plenty good when I'm traveling. If I just want to grab these and my iPhone and just go, you know, even though these aren't streaming to the uh, AirPods losslessly, it still sounds pretty listenable. And if I'm on a plane or in an automobile or something like that, with the noise cancellation, that's something that I really appreciate um, a lot. And that kind of helps it sound better having noise cancellation. Whereas with the Mojo 2, you're not really getting noise cancellation when you're out on the go. Um, so, you know, if you, unless you have really good high-end IEMs that really block out a lot of the sound and, you know, uh, make it so that they're almost like noise canceling earbuds, you're not really going to probably benefit from all of the features that the Mojo 2 can offer. But I would say if you're looking for something that's a very small, pocketable solution that's an all-in-one solution that you can use on your desktop when you're at home and mobily that's an audio file solution the Mojo 2 is really going to be tops they have a new desktop mode as well which I think is supposed to intelligently uh, allow you to plug it into a desktop uh, Mac, you know computer Mac or PC and um, not wear down the battery like you could on the Mojo 1 so that's really good 
Um, it'll actually not charge the battery unless it has to uh, automatically. Um, so you can use it as a desktop DAC, really. Um, so that's really uh, a big plus as well. Of course, they've increased the amount of digital taps in the Mojo 2 from previous. So now it has a lot more taps. And I'm just looking for that on the website here. That's why I'm looking down here. So um, uh, let's see how many taps does this thing even have. I think it has something like 40,000 taps or something like that, right? Um, so it's certainly a lot more improved in that respect. Um, and just the form factor is more improved as well. It has a new M button, which is a menu button that allows you to go through different menu options and set different things uh, on the Mojo too, and it will remember that as well. Um, it also has a USB uh, input, USB, USB-C input now for audio. So it still allows the USB micro audio input, and that allows backwards compatibility with the Poly, which has been out for a couple of years. Um, a lot of people don't like the USB micro, and they're kind of complaining about the fact that it has USB micro, but I think they really needed to do that in order to provide Poly compat backwards compatibility with the Poly. But the good thing is if you have a USB C device, it also has the USB-C input as well, although the USB-C can't be used to charge the unit. Um, so, so yeah, just going through on their website here, um, some of the key points, improved FPGA, more resolution and power and efficiency. Um, as I said, improved battery and FPGA um, power management controls, the new menu function I've mentioned also. Um, UHD DSP, it says advanced EQ adjustment for headphones file formats and personal taste. Um, also, I believe there's a headphone uh, impedance uh, feature in there as well. So if you're using high impedance headphones, you can actually switch the Mojo 2 um, to actually sort of, uh, put out a better impedance level for high impedance headphones um, you know, for more optimized sound as well. It also has the improved WTA filtering, 40 DSP cores for better transparency and lower noise, the high-speed USB-C input, two 3.5 millimeter headphone outputs and wireless ready, simply add the poly for streaming. So let's go ahead and see if there's any comments here. I have only a few people, handful of people watching now, but I think, um, you know, I didn't time this live stream at all. This is just totally impromptu. So when this turns into a video later on in my channel, there might be some comments that, um, you know, people can engage in the comments and ask questions and I'll try to answer there as well. But let me just see if there's any questions in the live chat here. Um, yeah, some people are saying um, after seven years, the sound improvement is minor. Um, Mighty has commented that on the Mojo 2. That might actually be true. You know, as I said, it's um, a evolution, not a revolution. But with more increased taps, I think it's going to sound better than the Mojo 1. Um, you know, more taps has been proven to sound better and more transparent. And then also you get the uh, EQ as well. So, you know, someone like me who likes a lot of bass boost, or not a lot, but does like bass boost and some headphones don't sound, you know, bassy enough for me, I think that is going to be a major plus with the uh, Mojo 2. It's going to be a better quality EQ using the Mojo 2 based EQ settings rather than trying to do it in software uh, in general. But yeah, it is just uh, an evolution, not a revolution. Um, but you know, I think also the price isn't too bad. I think when the Mojo came out, it was like $699. Of course, it went down after that, but the Mojo 2 is only $725, so it's not that much more expensive um, than when the Mojo came out seven years ago. So that's a plus as well. I'm glad it's not, I'm glad it's not something that's like you know, over $1,000 or something like that. But as I said, I don't know for sure if I'm going to get it because I am pretty happy mobily just with the Apple AirPods Max or the AirPods. The only reason I would probably get it is if I want to do mobile listening that's more audiophile listening around the house when I'm away from my main rig, which is the uh, Accord Hugo TT2 and the M Scaler. So if I want to go to a different room or something like that and listen to more audiophile, um, then I could probably use the Mojo 2. But again, I'm still pretty happy with the sound of this with noise cancellation with the Apple stuff just wirelessly. Even you want to uh, want to listen intently and stuff like that. Um, you know, it works with Cobuzz and you know that streams either high res or lossless. Although I'm not getting high res or lossless wirelessly to the Apple devices, but that might be something that's coming on the horizon. You know, app, there is rumors that the next version of AirPods may actually stream wirelessly to the AirPods completely losslessly. So I think that will really change things 
drastically if they do come out with that. That is kind of going to revolutionize things because currently right now you're only getting an AAC stream to the Apple, any Apple AirPods. And it's not wired, it's not lossless. So even if you're playing lossless or high res from the source, like from your iPhone or whatever like that, you're not getting lossless wirelessly to your AirPods. So that is kind of one negative uh, with them, you know, for someone who's like an audiophile. Uh, okay, let's see. A lot of spam comments here that are getting blocked automatically by the filter, which is good, thanks to YouTube. Um, <laughs> and um, let me see. Yeah, there's not much else I can talk about that here, but I did want to um, kind of open it up for comments in the comments field. So what I'll do is I'll turn this live stream video into a video in my channel. And if you're watching this later, just feel free to ask any questions or comment about your thoughts on the Cord Mojo 2, you know, what you think about it. Um, I think it's a pretty cool device. I mean, the Mojo was due for an update after like seven years or something. And, uh, you know, and that small form factor sells really, really well. A lot of people like their small little portable devices. And it's kind of cool that it's a do all device that you can take with you like, let's say you want to bring something with you um, for your commute to work, but then you also want to use it at work, you know, plug it into your computer at work, you can do that. And you're getting complete audio file quality uh, as well. The other thing is this new Mojo can plug into the M scaler. So if you have the Cord M scaler, it can plug into there, although you're not getting the full taps, you know, the full amount of um, upscaling uh, with the Mojo that you would get with something like the uh, Cord uh, TT2 or the Hugo 2, but it can upscale, you know, through the M-Scaler um, completely digitally. Let's see, any other comments here? Let's see, just mostly a lot of spam comments, and I'm probably missing some of the comments as they're flying by. But anyway, um, if you've missed being able to comment in this live chat or live stream, just go ahead and uh, wait until it appears as a video in my channel and go ahead and leave a comment and I'll still interact there. And maybe I've missed something too, because this is just a very impromptu live stream that I just didn't really plan ahead, but I did want to just sort of chat about the Mojo 2. And I'm actually on the fence, you know, if you're wondering whether I'm gonna really buy it or not, I'm kind of on the fence for the reasons that I've mentioned in this video. Um, it does seem and look really cool to me and I do want one, but on the other hand, uh, I don't know if I need one, you know what I mean? So thanks for watching and uh, I will see you in the comments field.